going? I got that one. Gosh. <laughs> All right, so we have Derek Berry here today to speak to us about the all-weather sports complex that they're looking at in Redmond. I, he was on the news and I saw him and reached out to him. I know when my kids were little, like this has been an ongoing topic of some place that they could get out of the wind, trying to find places for them to practice during our crazy weather, uh, hot and cold here. And so uh, he is the president and CEO of the group and it's made up of parents, citizens, business owners, professional athletes that are interested in finding a sports complex where the kids and uh, adult sports can get out of the weather and be able to practice inside like a lot of other communities okay. have and then hopefully we'll draw uh, other <coughs> communities to come here and be able to participate in more opportunities for tournaments and stuff. Well, thank you for having me. I'm going to give you give you a few handouts. This uh, today is uh, is about community outreach and, and information. So I'm, I'm not, there's no ask at the end of it, and uh, um, but I can tell you how refreshing it is to come in and hear the pledge of allegiance and, and a nice prayer and. Um, I think we need a little more of that, in, uh, especially in the schools that I sometimes go visit. Um, so, thank you for having me. You got, you guys have this too. Uh, just, <clears throat> so, you might a uh, couple of faces that, uh, besides Marty back there, um, it's it's nice to be in familiar uh, ground with uh, with the Beavers. My wife's a Beaver, so I get to. Uh, to celebrate uh, those colors, but uh, anyways, uh, I wanted to, uh, we've been going kind of knocking on doors around Central Oregon, bringing this message in our, uh, our alliance, what we call a community coalition, uh, and introducing this, this program and this project to people throughout all the communities in Central Oregon. Um, and so um, this is about building facilities uh, for our youth, for our community, and um, we have focused our energy on building them here in Redmond. And the reason for that is because the Expo Center, as most of you know, is going through a new redevelopment, uh, new master planning. They're gaining about 150 new acres to their facility on the south side of the airport just across the street here from us. And uh, what that's triggering is a whole new conversation about what is the what does the expo look like in 5, 10, 20 plus years? And how do we best utilize that as a community and, um, and also pay for it? Um, and so our, what we did was we got together a group of us, uh, passionate sports people, and said, how do we, how do we uh, is there a problem, number one? Um, and what that problem is is lack of facilities, especially indoor facilities. And number two is how do we, where do we put it and how do we pay for it? Um, and so we decided that we were going to get together, build this coalition um, of community members um, and professional athletes and that are residents or have some tie to Central Oregon and really understand what um, the value to our community is to invest in our kids and to invest in these sports facilities. About a decade ago, we, um, we went through this process. Some of you might remember um, the city um, I think the city of Redmond um, and all, all of the tourist kind of entities in our area put this program and tried to build facilities. They didn't have a location, but they tried to push this forward about a decade ago. It failed for a number of reasons, mainly because um, uh, of the lack of available land. And as most of you know, our land use laws are pretty restrictive on putting parks in EFU or, or farmland, and so developing a new park facility is pretty hard to do. Um, and so today our timing is great, our community is supporting us. We, our coalition is a nonprofit. One of our board members is back here, Paul Povey, who you guys uh, might know from town, but uh, uh, we, uh, we're excited to kind of introduce this project to you. Um, so if you've got, everybody's got kind of their handout, I'll walk you through a bit about our, our mission and, and um, why we're 
uh, who we are and why we're doing this, and and um, then I'm happy to take some questions as well at the end. So, um, really, the concept that we're talking about, I think this is on page three or four, um, is to build indoor and outdoor facilities um, for sporting sporting events. Our kids using them, um, obviously bringing new uh, teams to town and and new competitive sports, whether it's um, pickleball, volleyball, basketball, um, soccer, you name the sport, we're kind of talking about um, facilities for these folks. And um, they, the lack of indoor space is a real problem here in Central Oregon, and um, not just in Redmond, it's Bend, it's a, it's a problem. We're seeing kids that live in Burns that are playing sports here, and Central Oregon, we see kids that are live in Bend are coming to Redmond to play sports, and they're traveling, and um, um, and their parents are are trying to get them up up here because of facility access issues. Um, we're seeing a, a tremendous amount of people moving over the hill and taking their kids over on the other side of the hill to play sports as well. And so, from this kind of age six to eighteen is the age group that we're really focused on and making sure that these kids don't get left behind um, it, when it comes to sports and competitive sports because a lot of these kids don't have, um, you know, the value, I should say, is really healthy kids equal healthy adults. And if we invest in our kids, that they're going to be productive citizens and as adults um, in, in a healthy way, we're going to have lower homelessness, we're going to have lower crime rates, these kids are, um, when I was a kid, I grew up in Canada, so um, when, when I, and this is kind of my, my uh, you know, I love this area because it reminds me a lot of where I grew up, and, and um, but the saying when I was a kid was, keep your kid on ice and they'll stay out of hot water. So I grew up playing, I, I, I grew up playing ho hockey, of course, and uh, you'd never know it now, but uh, that was my sport, and uh, my kids now are, you know, out, some of them, a couple of them are out of the house. I still have a couple that are in the, in, in the house and playing sports. But we're, we see this kind of overarching thing that, that we don't have <laughs> facilities to even meet our growing needs in our community when it comes to our children. And, you know, we certainly can talk about adult sports and adaptive sports um, and, and the lack of facilities there. I mean, pickleball is, a, is one of these sports that is growing. Indoor track is needed in our area. And we just can't keep up with the, the demand. I think our parks departments, local parks departments, whether it's Redmond or Bend or Madras, they're keeping up, keeping their head kind of above water, but they're not looking towards the future. And we are really not, haven't done a good job of articulating the value to our community of investing in more sports facilities for our youth and what those values are. So our organization got together, we, we've got all of the leagues, the clubs, the teams, the travel sports, said, do you guys have, is there, an, do you have a problem with facilities and getting facility access, no matter what town you're in? Yes, raise your hand, join our alliance, and we represent, you know, over 4,000 Central Oregon athletes now. And, um, and they've, everybody's common problem is, you know, we don't have enough places to play, we don't have access, or, or the weather, springtime, and, and you know, I always, I always joke that I've been here for over a decade, and, and it's, you know, we've got three more, month, three more months of winter. And this is kind of the same kind of climate where I grew up in, and uh, you know everybody goes, oh, March is it's springtime, and they're like, no, we've got you know probably June first is about springtime, um, real real springtime, and uh, where it doesn't snow on our baseball game or our softball game or something like that outside. So, um, anyways, we uh, I uh, going back to the facilities and the need for them, you know the information that we're presenting and we're trying to bring this coalition of gathering all of the. Um, cities, the county, uh, the county commissioners, and also the tourist agencies all together to kind of say, hey, are you guys on the same page as us? Do you, do you think that we should invest in, in our kids and at least understand what type of facilities we should be building and planning for for the future 
and would you join this regional project because we don't think that building these type of facilities should be on the backs of our taxpayers, whether it's in Bend or Redmond or even just kind of regionally. I think this, we think that this is a regional project and that these regional sports facility projects like this can be funded in a number of different ways and certainly private money is one of those areas that in sponsorships that we plan to investigate and bring you know people to the table to do that so we don't have to burden it ourselves you know, I, I think none of us like paying more taxes and higher taxes but the reality is is that we're bringing we're driving a lot of people into our area and they're moving here in kind of droves the last 10 years we've seen you know tremendous amount of growth in central oregon and we continue to see the need for investing in these types of facilities so uh yeah sorry if you don't mind i yeah. just came to mind before the conversation centered around hosting tournaments and making money that way yeah that's still part of the idea yeah absolutely so i think you know the about a decade ago that was their push was really about bringing more tourists to our area and at the time it made a lot of sense um, because they said hey let's bring more people here and and pay for this by bringing you know people from portland and seattle or wherever and consequently in the last decade what we've seen is this real shift in that our needs as a community outweigh the kind of tourism you know side of things in that you know yes there'll be weekends where there's gonna be people coming to town and using facilities like this but we see our the real need is our community our regional community needs a place to play I mean I have a little brother here in Redmond the city of Redmond he can't his mom doesn't drive doesn't can't read and can't get to after-school sports and can't play whether it's a parks and rec program or a club sport unless they have a friend that can drive them you know he, he can't get to these sports he doesn't even have access to some of these sports so we're talking with uh, CET to develop a plan on bringing kids being able to get kids from all parts of our community to these facilities to these events to make sure that kids have access to play um, but yeah you're right there there is an aspect that they'll be out of town the weekends pay for these kind of you know places right um, Medford is a great example that I continue to use um, where they've had I think their, their data just came out a couple of months ago if anybody's been in Medford in the last five or six years you'll see the, the investment that community made in their sports um, and sports facilities they've had six new hotels built in the last six years for supporting their facilities and we're not proposing what they did but it's a good example of what can happen and that more growth will happen and you know some um, more people will come and use these facilities but our our main goal is to support our kids locally and um, and that's really um, kind of the bread and butter of our project we are all volunteers we're all um, kind of come from this area and have a passion for serving and um, and our backgrounds are all kind of in that in that same mode I'm I happen to be the leader today but uh, um, we've got a lot of great people on our board our, our sports advisory board as well and um, we're excited to kind of present uh, this project we've been working with not only the um, the city of Redmond but also the county the commissioners they um, they all are aware of what's going on the Expo Center has just released their master plan RFP or RFQ and um, we anticipate to have the data back from our feasibility studies um, by this fall which will really tell us what facilities we need to build um, to support our community now what it looks like in the next 10 years and um, and then the options the pro forma of how do we pay for this and um, we really think that this there's a, a private um, fundraising as aspect to this to support our kids locally so that it doesn't price kids out of out of sports and again we don't have to burden it on our tax roll here how many days was that um, you know when taxes are due so anyways um, any questions so far 
How does this significantly change different than the park and rec department that we already have? So this is a regional project where parks and rec is, Redmond Parks and Rec is its own entity. And I think um, they've, they've got their own projects that they're doing. And so we're partnering with them to make sure that whatever their scope, their current project list looks like and what their you know, goals are to build facilities or, or even their current inventory of facilities, that we don't overlap in those. So I know that you guys just funded a pool. I think it's a pool project um, it, um, here in, in Redmond and, and that it's, you know, getting whittled down a bit from the kind of the what was sold initially to, to everybody. And the goal of our organization is that this is, we're talking about a regional facility in Redmond that's supported regionally, not by the city of Redmond or the taxpayers of Redmond. But we want this to make sure that it makes sense, but it's also that it's sold properly to the public. Meaning, people that use these facilities need to see value, but the people that don't use these facilities need to understand the importance and why we're pushing to build these facilities and what the impact means to their tax base. And, um, and it, can, it can have a, a, a positive impact on each of us that don't use these facilities. My kids are going to be long gone by the time you know, it, we see these things ever, the ground being you know, bulldozed over across the street here. But, uh, and hopefully we're, we do get these facilities built sooner rather than later. But I think this is a long-term project and we're at the initial stages of it and pre we're presenting an idea and a plan to get there as a community. And so that's the important part of why I'm here to present, to reach out to the communities, to introduce this idea and this concept, and uh, to really um, get community engagement and buy-in. And if the buy-in's not there, and we don't have interest, and you don't see value in what we're doing, we're not doing our job, I don't think, effectively, because it's not just your kids or your grandkids that can use these. A question about um, indoor sports facilities for use particularly during the winter. I got a 10 year old grandson that plays soccer when it's, you know, the complex that toward our city dump, uh, outdoor soccer and flag football. Yes. Now, they, when they wanted to play indoors, when the, we had the snow and everything, they went to Bend yes. where they have an indoor facility. Yes. Do you plan on having something like that? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think. So a decade ago, um, when they, this project was first launched um, by a group of the, like I mentioned earlier, um, the things that made the most sense immediately were the indoor facilities. Marty can also kind of vouch for the need for basketball and volleyball space. The court space and the access to these indoor facilities is non-existent. And so what we're looking at is how do we build facilities, whatever the square footage may be, that can be used in the morning for maybe pickleball or some other activity during the day, then a volleyball or basketball at night, or it can be also used as expo or convention space in a multi-use space, and it makes sense for the expo center to bring a project like this in. Those are the type of things that we're coordinating um, that have multi-use, multi-sport, um, whether it's soccer, indoor, uh, volleyball, basketball, whatever it may be. Now the technology today has gotten a lot better with, with the indoor, they've got these tents. I don't know if you've seen, you go to the Midwest and you see these domes over a soccer field or a baseball field, they're everywhere. Everybody in these climates has these, ha have these domes. Even Knife River, a big you know, company here um, locally, they just built a huge facility um, over near Corvallis and um, just to train their bulldozer operators and their truck drivers and things like that and uh, those kind of domes might be something feasible for us over here that don't cost a lot of money up front to build um, but it gives us that indoor space that our kids and our community desperately needs and like I said it's not just a youth issue it's an adult it's an adaptive sports issue and and um, we see the need was was real 10 years ago with our data, and we think it's just been exacerbated since then. Like mm -hmm. it's the, the need for facilities has increased, so. Yeah, um, 
Derek, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, one thing that's kind of close to our hearts here at Monis is we've taken on uh, a project to build an outdoor playground, natural playground, at the new rec center because of cost overruns yeah. that occurred be much higher than we may anticipate. Uh, they've had to cut out some of the elements of the project, and so we have engaged in raising a half a million dollars to put that playground in place over three years. Um, I, I hope that doesn't happen with your project, but uh, it seems like it's all too likely a, a thing these yeah. days. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you make a great point, and um, and that's one of the main reasons why we started this nonprofit, and um, is because our city workers, our parks departments, they're not equipped for public outreach. They're they just they can barely keep their heads above water with just operating their their own departments at this point. And so I think the idea that you just presented. It's real, whether it's in Redmond or Bend or any other city, these folks that are putting these budgets together aren't doing a great job of A, budgeting, but B, they're not doing a great job of community outreach and being able to, to articulate the value or to under-promise and over-deliver. And so having an organization like ours as really the community outreach and the PR arm for a project like this is really what is going to be valuable and why we think we can get to the finish line on this project this time. It's because we need more people talking about this, we need more outreach, and I think your project in Redmond, if it was presented differently and sold differently, it would have been, it's, there wouldn't be so much pain now that's being, you know, kind of, un, you know, you're, you're overrun on budget. It probably would have passed the first time instead of yeah. you know, after three tries, okay? so yeah. that's our public outreach side. Yeah. And it's, every town's the same way. Um, we see this kind of throughout all, all the whole Tri-County area, and we all, each city's got its own kind of, you know, growing pains that they're going, going through at this point. Um, and everybody from the Parks Department that we've spoke to all buys into the idea of having regional sports facilities that we can use as, as a region. Um, and the, the best and likely spot for it is honestly here. Um, and, you know, Redmond's the hub, and I always kind of sell that to everybody where we're going to all these other communities. And um, A, because you have the land available across the street, um, but B, you've got the airport, you have lots of hotels that are actually coming online now, where five, six, seven, ten years ago, we had a kind of a chicken and egg thing where we didn't have enough rooms to even meet our tourism demands. And so to bring more people on a weekend here was not really feasible um, because of the cost of, uh, or the lack of hotel rooms. And you're talking about placing this at Expo Center? Yeah, yeah. We want yeah. to try to get in on their master planning is our goal. Right? Yeah. So they're gonna do the master planning. We want to try and work with them to kind of help guide. I, maybe it's not in their plan, but we want to try and make it part of their plan. It's just, it's just good timing. Yeah, we think, I mean, they've got a big piece of pie that they're trying to, um, you know, they're, they're looking for the future and all of what the Expo Center should be and should offer. And whether it's rodeo or races or water parks or whatever it may be over there, sports facilities can be one piece of that pie. And we think that we fit in nicely. We're not t talking about developing a huge uh, piece or majority of their land next door. It's just, can we fit, fit more sports facilities in this region and answer some of the concerns we have as a community, a general community. I'm just a little worried about a bad taste that may be in people's mouths when they thought this is what they were getting. Mm -hmm. And maybe not even due to the parks and recs issues, the architect, yeah. construction people, but now they're getting this instead. Yeah. And, um, and you're going to go back to them for an operating budget at some point? Well, that's, the great, that's a great point. And, you know, our intention, like I said earlier, was not to put this on the backs of the taxpayers. Yeah. And so what, what we think, I'm not going to speak for the Expo, um, because the Expo may issue a bond for their projects that they're going to develop in the next 6 to 12 months over there. Right. Uh, but for the sports facility side, we've seen this around the country where private money can come in 
and support these kind of public ventures of building out facilities in a reasonable fashion. We're not saying come and we're gonna raise $200 million to build out a whole bunch of stuff tomorrow. But what we can do is if we do have the community buy-in and support, and we have this coalition, it's much easier for us to go to a big private foundation, to some big, bigger, the bigger companies that are local, and say, would you invest in sponsoring this facility? And we've had a lot of those conversations with um, a number of those kind of private, private money people, and. Um, we think that there's a good chance that a lot of these sports facilities are going to be privately funded um, to some extent, but we want to do it in a way that makes sure that our kids are none of our kids are left behind, because access to sports today is expensive, and I I'm I spend my life in the nonprofit world, and I don't want to see any kid being priced out of sports because you know we're building these private facilities and they need to turn profit. I, I, I would hope that our community can rally around and get to uh, make sure that we can raise money to keep these kids in schools. So, um, so yeah, I've got a little bit of data. Like it was. Yeah. I have a, just a demographics question. In the sure. region, how many children of around 12 or less, lower, do you think you'd be serving uh, once you're up and going? Um, so those numbers are have been are out. I've seen the numbers, and I can't quote them. I don't have that number in front of me. Um, just, but you know, I think that uh, we're generally talking five thousand plus um, kids easily. And I'm not talking just the travel, you know, elite kind of competitive sports people. It's you know the sports. the little leagues. I mean the little leagues struggle just you know in, in in this area just for access to facilities and um, so it's so it's not just kids but um, yeah we're gonna have uh, I think those numbers are in the tens of thousands mm -hmm. um, and that's growing I think our demographics show that our kid number of kid population is is lowering in our schools um, over the next 20 years but that's it's, it's kind of flatlined as far as people having more kids that are, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, we're good, there are more of us that are getting older and not having as many kids as we were 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and, but the need is still there today. I bring it up because our, our club and others want to concentrate on children, yeah. uh, not teenagers or that particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we would, three or four clubs, all be interested in, in that question. How, yeah. how can we help the kids stay in sports or get in sports, whichever you Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think that that's the real value long term if these facilities are built here is to have that conversation of how can your group support this demographic and what's the best, best kind of impact for your dollar. And um, I think that that's probably supporting them financially or through equipment to make sure that they can get access, whether it's transportation or, or getting to these facilities, like my little brother, is, it's a big deal. So um, right now what we're doing is building our coalition with these cities and counties, and we're still, we're about three quarters of the way there, and um, we still have some outlier communities that are asking the question, what's in it for us? Um, and those are good questions to ask. Um, we still can continue to tell the story that this is a, a regional central Oregon initiative and um, we've gotten great buy-in from your city, from the county, from other cities kind of close by here, including Bend, and uh, we continue to push this forward. Our feasibility studies of what we would build, how much, how much it would cost, those pro forma and cost numbers will come in at the fall of this year and at that point we'll start having real discussions of this is what this this is what we're talking about and um, and this is how we're going to build it and so okay they're uh, having you back in the fall right well yeah, yeah i mean i just I, like i said the intent is to you know outreach and and give you an introduction of what we're doing and and um, and so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me paul uh, marty's on there as well so support and participation as possible yeah, yeah, word of mouth.
It's great. Right. So thanks, Derek. We yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm supposed to get a picture. You are supposed to get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here. Before everybody leaves, I got one more thing to tell you. All right. Here we go. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Right, thanks, Derek. Appreciate it. Um, thank you. Positive quote of the day from uh, our friend Michelle. All right. The best thing about sports is a sense of community and shared emotion it can create. That's from Bob Costas. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good day.